Hi everybody, I'm Jim Shore. Uh, welcome to my studio. Uh, today we are going to do have a craft day. This is a project that uh, I love to do with uh, with kids, uh, and it's something that once you get the hang of it, you can make just an unlimited amount of things that uh, you would otherwise spend maybe quite a bit of money if they're available at all. Um, what I'm going to do uh, initially today is we're going to make a Halloween pumpkin. And this is something you can decorate your door with or you can uh, use it in your party or, or your, your kids room or whatever. And it's something that once you make it you can use it over and over and over year after year. You can make a whole bunch of them and just have a have a, Pumpkins galore, but you, it's not limited to just making pumpkins. You can, you can make uh, well. You can make uh, things for Christmas, like a wreath or a uh, a, uh, a nutcracker. You can make a nutcracker this tall. Uh, you can make uh, angels. You can make stars. You can make uh, any number of things. For uh, for the Thanksgiving, you can make a turkey, or you can use a make another pumpkin. Only make it a harvest pumpkin. And so once, once you get the hang of this, and I tell you about how to use these various materials that are so readily available uh, at a combination of your craft stores like, uh, like Michael's and Hobby Lobby, uh, and the uh, home, home improvement stores like, uh, like, say, Lowe's or Home Depot, you can find these things, and they're, and they're very easy to work, they're not very expensive, and you can make an awful lot of stuff out of them. First off, the main ingredient here is this type of pink foam. It's rigid foam. It's readily available at, uh, at the home improvement stores. This happens to be two inches thick. And it comes in a, this is a small piece I've got here for, the, for this project, but it comes in a four by eight sheet. So once you get your sheet, you can make just all kinds of stuff out of it. And it's not very expensive. I think this sheet costs somewhere around $30. But uh, when you prorate that over all the things you can make, these pieces are just so inexpensive and easy to do, but most importantly, it's something that you can involve the kids in and, uh, you know, have a little bit of a, a, a craft day, a rainy day project, uh, something to, to give the kids something to get them away from their computers and, and uh, actually get them hands-on to doing something. And it, uh, it'll, it'll bring you together because it's a lot of fun. Uh, first off, we need to cut the shape out. Uh, so that we end up with the shape of this pumpkin. I'll show you how easy it is to do. And it doesn't take very long at all. And you don't have to be an artist to do it. You just, you know, you, if it's a little bit lopsided or it's a little bit primitive, well, that's good. We like primitive. So uh, we like folk art, you know. So now what I'd use, I use scale saw. Why? Because I have one. But if you don't have one, you can use a utility knife. You can use, you can use a bread knife. You can use a, a keyhole saw, and uh, these are saws that you normally cut holes in, uh, all things like uh, drywall and that sort of thing for setting switches and whatnot. Uh, but but they're they're cheap too, and uh, and they'll go through this stuff like uh, like butter. So uh, first off, let me uh, let me draw a picture of a pumpkin, and I'm going to use a magic marker and just give me an outline here so I'll sort of know what I'm doing. And so, and like I say, you can do different shapes. You can do it tall and thin. You can do it big and fat. You can do them small. You can do them big and, uh, and have a whole cluster of them. We're going to end up painting them eventually, and that's another choice too. You can use, uh, you can use the typical orange and uh, different uh, Halloween colors like I did on this one. Or you can do it, uh, if you want it to do a little more modern, you can have them all black or all, all blue. That looks good. Or my favorite color, purple. And uh, you can, you, the only thing that limits you here is, is, the, the, is your imagination. Anything you can think of to do, you can make with this foam. It's durable, it lasts forever, it's really easy to use. And, and it's, uh, it's something that if you want to build it up, you can actually laminate this and make three-dimensional things so there's no limit to what you can do. And you can laminate it very easily using this stuff here. It's, an, it's a spray adhesive. I think there's probably other things that will work too. There's a, there's a type of, uh, of uh, glue that, you, that is, comes in a caulking gun that's made for foam. You can use that. But this stuff here works very well. It's, uh, 
it's a 3M product. It's, uh, it's called Super 77. I highly recommend it because it just works so well. You just spray it on both surfaces, stick them together, and they're there permanently. And you can build that, uh, that thing up as big or as, as big and fat, three-dimensional as you want. So right now we've got sort of the pumpkin shape started. And we'll put a, a few veins in it the way the pumpkins have uh, to, to make that shape. Something like that. So you don't have to be real precise or real exact because you're going to do some uh, working down with the, with the sandpaper to shape this thing up. And you'll see as you go along, it it, uh, it works out very easily and real quick. In fact, it, uh, uh, the only reason this isn't going quicker is because I'm explaining it. If, if Once you get the hang of it, you'll zip right through this stuff. Now, forgive the sound, but I'm going to cut this out with my... With my uh, with my jigsaw, but I'll show you how easy this stuff cuts. This is, a, this is just a typical bread knife. See, it cuts nice and clean. This is, uh, this is your keyhole saw. You can cut through it with that. You can cut through it with a utility knife. But if you use something like this and you got the kids around, moms and dads, you, you use the knife. Don't let the kids use the knife because the idea in this thing is to have some fun and not, not, not get hurt. Because if you cut yourself with the, one of these things, it will ruin your day, trust me. I've got scars to prove it. So let me, give me just a minute, and I'll cut this thing out, and then we'll get started in the real, the real sculpting part of it. but uh, you see how easy that uh, how easy that came apart and how quickly you can do that and the more projects you do with this the better off you'll get uh, get at it and it's good to be in close proximity to a, a good vacuum cleaner because <laughs> now this isn't like the, the white foam that has all the little beads and stuff all over the place but when you're cutting it does make a little bit of dust but it's really easy to clean up because it doesn't uh, it doesn't, okay, static electricity doesn't uh, affect it, so it's not clinging all over the place. Okay, now, we've got the general shape of the, of the, the pumpkin cut out, as you can see. What we're going to do now is we're going to start shaping it into uh, the pumpkin shape. And this requires a little bit of sculpting. So, at the end of this uh, craft period, you'll be a sculptor, just like me. Now, I'm using the utility knife. It, it, this goes very quickly, but you can use, like I said, you can use a steak knife, a bread knife, you can use an electric knife too, one of those electric carvers, or, or anything that, uh, that does a, a cut because this stuff is so soft and easy to work. So I'm going to cut the, try to keep your fingers out of the way. And once again, you don't have to be real precise, you don't have to be uh, real precision with this. You just want to get that edge broken down just a little bit. Now here's a tip too. The way I'm doing this, I'm using kind of a sawing motion. If you drag it through, sometimes you get a little bit of dimples and, and bumps. If you, if you change the angle of your knife as you're carving into this stuff and make sort of a more severe angle like this, it'll cut a lot smoother and the, the cut that you make, you won't have to work so hard um, you know, getting it smoothed out once you start the, uh, the sanding process. Okay, we've got the stem here, so we're gonna relax just a little bit of material there. start on that. Just get these sharp edges off of here. It doesn't take very long at all. And you get better at it as you, the more you do. It's kind of, it's kind of like carving a piece of wood, except that you don't have to worry about, about a grain, and it's, it's very soft and very easy to do. 
But the kind of cuts that I make in this is just like the same kind of cuts I start off with, uh, you know, with carving the, my projects in wood. Now to get these veins in here, all we have to do initially is just make a groove in there, which we will uh, work down as we start the, getting into the real sculpting uh, process. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a simple sort of a, a little trough here. So we'll do a cut this way. And then we'll do a cut this way. Comes right out and we've got, you'll have something like this. Then we'll do the same thing on these, these curves. Remember, keep your fingers out of the way if you're using one of these sharp utility knives. Or any knife, really. And once you get the, this initial cutting uh, done, put these knives away so the kids don't get, on, get hold of them. Okay, now you already, you see, as you can see, you already start to sort of have a, a pumpkin shape. And that didn't take, uh, yeah, that didn't take long at all. So here we go. Now, actually, you could almost go with this because it's got sort of a stylized pumpkin shape. But we're going we're gonna to go one step farther, smooth this thing out, and, uh, and really make it look like a, you know, like a pumpkin is. And we're going to do that with, simply with sandpaper. Now there are tools that you can use uh, if you're using a, a bigger project um, to work out a lot, of, lot more material. It's, this, this thing right here is kind of like a rasp and it, uh, it takes off a lot of material very aggressively. So if you're working on a bigger project you can take this and as you can see it removes a lot of material. But what we're going to use on this smaller project is simply sandpaper. Don't worry, Mom, I'll clean this up later. I promise. Um, get this stuff out of the way. Okay. Um, the sandpaper I'll be using, I'll be using a couple of grits. Once again, readily available. You probably have around the house already. A lot of this stuff you probably do. But this is... Uh, this is fairly aggressive sandpaper. This is 60 grit, so it's very coarse. Now I've got a little bit finer. This is 100, and this will put a this will put a real nice smooth finish on it. If you're working for some, on something eventually that you want to be a real art project, you can actually go finer up down to to 220, and it almost puts a uh, a shine on it. So I've uh, I've got a couple pieces here that I folded up to make them a little bit more manageable. And I'll show you how easy this works. We've got this, this uh, chamfer that we've cut here, and we want to smooth this down so that it makes a nice round. And that's very quick. Now just that one piece, you can see how nice and round that is. If we if we have, if we want to light or make that a little smoother, we go to the finer grit and go, and go over that with the fine grit. It takes out all those dimples and all those little little rough spots. And as you can see, that's a that's a pretty nice finish right there. Now we'll go over this entire thing very quickly. It'll only take I promise just a few minutes. And uh, and when I come back, we'll have this all. Uh, We'll have this all ready to, to put, start put some color on it. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, we're back. And now what I've done, as you can see, I've, I've smoothed this thing up and I'm uh, beginning to cut out the eyes, nose, and the features like that. Very simple. And it doesn't take but just a few minutes. In fact, from the time I started actually doing the smoothing to almost finished with cutting out this thing, it's just been a few minutes. It's very fast, and you'll see how easy this stuff uh, works when you actually start doing the sanding and the cutting. And 
don't worry if it's not perfect and, and oh I might mention <clears throat> that if it's got some uh, oh, a few divots or something that you don't like you can uh, you can easily fill that in with uh, spackling or joint compound and uh, then smooth that up so you can make this thing as uh, absolutely as smooth and as finished as you want to on something like this it doesn't matter but if you're doing something else like right now I'm working on a a uh, unicorn for the girls room and uh, same same technique same material but I want it to be a little bit smoother so I'm using some uh, fillers like that to make sure that the surface is just perfect now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put on a surface that will kind of bind everything together and give us something to paint against and that and we'll use a, a primer this is uh, this is a very good brand here this is uh, Zenzer but you can use anything, in fact you can even use a good white uh, or tinted uh, latex paint, works just as well. Now this is waterborne, that means that it's, uh, it does not have the, uh, the accelerants like um, oh, any kind of petroleum product that might dissolve uh, or, or compromise some of this foam. So make sure that whatever you put on here is water base, like a, a latex or an acrylic. Um, let's see, where's my opener, there it is, all right, now you'll end up with some scraps, and I urge you don't throw those scraps away until you've uh, decided what else you want to make, because you, uh, you can take the little pieces, you can make bats out of them, or you can use them as add-ons and, and uh, things to build up maybe a project in the future because so when you get finished with this you'll have lots of this stuff left over and, and you know you can uh, you can make just just an awful lot of things out of it if you just use your imagination now I uh, I buy these brushes here they're real cheap they're almost like throwaways in fact you can you know I clean them because that's because that's just the, the way I do but because uh, I'm frugal <laughs> but uh, these things are so cheap you can use them once and throw them away. I can buy a whole bag of them for oh five or six dollars, and you, once again, that's uh, available at uh, you know Michaels or or uh, Hobby Lobby, one of those. I'm not going to waste any time here. I'm going to put just a nice little thin coat on here, and it'll take it just a little bit of time for it to uh, it to dry. So we'll start uh, working this into all the little crevices and stuff. And like I say, if you got some holes that you don't like, um, get some uh, some joint compound or some uh, some spackling. Once again, you can get a little container of that for very inexpensive, and it goes a long way on a project like this. And you can fill those holes, let it dry, sand it up, and you'll never know they were ever there. So uh, as you get uh, you know, you get accustomed to how this stuff works and what you can do, what you can do with it. Really, it's a, it's a, it's a great way to, to come up with things for parties and things for. Uh, we use a lot of my, uh, you know, the pieces that I generally sculpt, like this, like this witch here and that sort of thing. We've got a display of it back here on the table, and I think most of you are familiar with my kind of artwork. So we do that, but we uh, we augment the things when we're having parties and so forth, particularly if we want something big, uh, you know, with uh, with this kind of technique. You can do ghosts or, or uh, you know turkeys or or you know if you want to decorate your your uh, kids' room or something, you can uh, you can put you can make a football, you can make a soccer ball, you can make a, a big initial and uh, and gold leaf it, and it looks just so beautiful and, and so professional. And it's inexpensive to do and something you can do with your kids and have a good time doing it. So I'm going to continue with this and uh, we're going to take just another little break. I'm going to finish coating this all up. I'm going to get a cup of coffee, put on some pumpkin making music, and uh, wait for this to dry. So when I come back we'll be ready to put some color on it. And I want you to pay attention to how quickly this stuff goes. Because right now we've just got a few minutes in this thing in total from start to finish, and, and you'll see you can just uh, you can make a whole group of them in in just a, a, a couple of hours or a, or a nice lazy afternoon with your kids. 
So I'll be right back in just, just a minute and we'll be ready to put some color on it. Okay, we're back. Now, what we've got here is the base coated um, pumpkin. Looks like a white jack-o'-lantern. We're gonna put some color on it and uh, <clears throat> this, this goes pretty quick. So uh, what we're using is just standard uh, artist paint that you'll pick up at, uh, at the craft store. But now, I have, to, I have to give you a little tip here. This is acrylic paint. Sometimes it sits on the shelf for a while, and if it does, it will coagulate and be unusable. It would be very disappointing if you get it home and you can't use it. So I recommend when you're in the store, open up the top and just give it a little squeeze and see how fluid that is. If that's nice and fluid like this, you got good fresh paint. But you want to make sure that your paint is, uh, is good and fresh. And I've got here, I've got orange, for obvious reasons. I've got some black. I've got a little bit of brown. That'll, that'll allow us to do a little bit of shaping on it, visually. And I've got, uh, I've got green. Like I said before, you can paint these things anything you want, any way you want. If you want it to be a little bit more modern, you know, make them all blue or make them all, you know, purple or, or some color scheme like that. <clears throat> now it looks a little rough. Don't worry about it. The paint will, uh, will hide some of those sins. If you want it to be smoother, like I said earlier, you can uh, patch up these things with uh, spackling or, or similar filler and it'll be nice and nice and smooth. On the bigger projects, if you want them to be finished projects, then I recommend you do that. Now, the reason I did the, the, the base coating on here, it sort of fills everything in it, it, uh, and it gives you a good surface to paint against. <clears throat> if you're painting something like red, which is difficult to cover, to cover, if you tint your base coating a little bit with, uh, with the color that you're using and make it pink or make it gray or something, uh, not just the stark white, it covers a little easier, so you might keep that in mind. But uh, what we're going to do is put out a little bit of green and very quickly, once again using these real cheap brushes, we'll uh, put a little color on the stem. And this is real, real fast painting. You don't have to be real, real precise. This is something that the kids can do without making uh, you know too big of a mess. Okay, just a couple of minutes here. We've got a got this nice green stem. And now we'll uh, we'll put down some uh, some orange on the surface of this thing. Once again, this is real real quick, fast painting. You don't have to be uh, Rembrandt to do this. you're actually doing this as a finished product, you might actually want to do, you know, maybe even a couple of coats. I'm just going to put one on here just to, for the sake of, uh, you know, of time, but, uh, but even the results of that will be pretty, pretty good. I fill in all the little, yeah, you know, little dimples and little creases and stuff.
we're gonna paint uh, we're gonna paint these features in here with a little bit of black so so you don't have to be you know super careful around them. Okay, we're kind of on the home stretch here. This paint's not very expensive. You might have you might actually have some in your if you do crafts, you'll, you'll certainly have some paint around that you can use. Okay, there's one quick coat. Like I say, if you're doing this uh, at home, you might uh, you might let this dry and put in another coat. Not absolutely essential, but it uh, makes the color a little bit denser. Now, if you want to shape this up, you can see what it looks like right now. If you want to give this a little bit of shape, you can use uh, something like, I've got some, uh, some, uh, some brown here. This is uh, actually uh, burnt sienna, but it is a type of brown. Just get a little bit of that on your brush and uh, start coming up the sides like this, maybe a little bit in these, some of these creases, feather it out a little bit, just to give it a little bit of contrast on the bottom. And it'll give, it'll give you a little bit of shaping of the piece, make it a little bit more artistic. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't take too long. Okay, so there we go. So in just a couple of minutes, we've got the pumpkin looking like so. Okay. All right, now. We'll take the uh, the black, put the features in the uh, in the face. Trust me, this is a lot more fun to do than to watch. But Couple minutes, and you'll see we've got uh, we've got this jack o' lantern pretty much on the run here. Now, what I've done in the meantime is I have created the uh, what I'm going to use as the as the leaves. I used uh, some black material like this. It's uh, it's you know it's Halloween material. It's black. It's got blue on it. If you were doing uh, uh, if you were doing a, let's say, a harvest thing to celebrate Thanksgiving, you would use, uh, you know, harvest colors and, uh, and that sort of thing. And you can, uh, you can, you know, use your imagination on what you want to use as far as the, the coloration of the, uh, of the leaves. I cut those out and then I used a um, fabric stiffener. Let's see, I've got it around here somewhere. Here it is. Fabric stiffener. If you don't have that, or you don't want to spring for that, um, you can use a white glue, like an Elmer's glue, something that dries clear, and uh, thin it down just a little bit and uh, soak your cloth in it. Shape the cloth with uh, creases and so forth. Give it a little bit of interest. Uh, let it dry on a piece of uh, wax paper. And you've got the same thing that I've got here. I'll be finished with this in just a second. Okay. And th 
this color actually you can use uh, something different too. You can use red or a dark orange or a, a purple. Uh, okay, so that's basically the, the painting. Now, what you'll do at home, you'll take a little bit more care than I have. I'm, I'm working kind of against the clock here, but uh, if you take your time and get, get everything all nice and neat, then you can come back and if you got a little, a few little places where that you're not liking, you can uh, you can uh, clean them up, clean the edges up with a little bit of, of the uh, you know the orange and, and uh, really make it just just right. Now, what we'll do now is uh, we'll put on these leaves. This is what I've got. Now I've I've done this with the, the fabric soft or stiffener, I soaked it in a stiffener, and then I put some folds in it. And you can just shape that around with your uh, with your hands, and it'll stay. And when it dries, it'll be nice and rigid like this. Okay, we're going to apply these uh, these leaves that we just made with a little bit of a little bit of hot glue. Put a little a little dollop on there. Position it on the pumpkin. Like I said, I made these things out of black because it's Halloween, but you can. Uh, Use your imagination if you've got some scraps around the house. Uh, this kind of project, nothing's really wrong. You can do it uh, all sorts of different ways. Now, um, for these uh, curly st uh, stems, I got some of these. They're chenille stems. You can get them at the craft store. And florists use that uh, in their, in their uh, floral arrangements, but we're using them as stems today. Uh, you want to put a little bit of curl on them, so just take something around like a, like your paint uh, bottle, wrap it around there like that, give it a little bit of a curl, and you've got an instant bind. We'll get a couple of those, fix them up. I want to remind you about uh, something we've started recently. It's the Circle of Friends. You might be on it already, but if you're not, I, I urge you to go to jimshorecircleoffriends.com and uh, join up. We'll be doing a lot of projects like this for yourself and for your kids and uh, have a little bit of fun together. And we'll be oh, looking at the studio here and we'll, uh, I'll invite you into my home and you can meet some of, the, some of the kids and the grandkids that you always hear me talking about and uh, get to meet my, uh, my lovely bride. And uh, we'll find, you can find out uh, what we have on our schedule and what we have planned coming up with our travels and uh, the different events and, you know, that sort of stuff. So it makes it kind of, it's a fun way of keeping track of what we're doing. And uh, so I urge you to do that. That's jimshorecircleoffriends.com. We're going to apply these things, and I've got a, a stem application tool here, better known as a tenpenny nail. And all you do is you just make a little hole in there, put just a little bit of uh, either regular glue or, in this case I'm using some hot glue, and you just uh, stick it in there, and there you go. Put another one on the other side. And once again, you can jazz these things up any way you want to. If you have, uh, you know, if you have some uh, some jewels or or some uh, different things around your craft uh, your craft bin, you can jazz it up with this. What I'm going to do, and this is kind of, uh, as you can see, we've got a pretty good start on here. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that really really brings this thing together, and it uh, it really makes it pop and it's so easy to do. I've got some spray adhesive here, and you can use that other stuff that I was talking about earlier uh, for laminating it, and that's the Super 77. It's uh, a good spray, uh, spray glue. And I'm gonna just coat this with just a little bit of a, a dusting of this, uh, this adhesive. And it'll dry completely um, you know, pretty soon, so you don't have to worry about it being sticky and tacky. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Now I I got a, a bottle of this or uh, a container of this glitter. Uh, you can use any color you want, but uh, I've got the orange iridescent glitter, and it's going to make this thing really, really uh, pop. It just 
transforms it instantly from being sort of flat and, and plain to being something that's really, really pretty and really eye-catching. Get sufficient amount on there, that gives you something to clean up a little bit later. Put a little on the stem, maybe. That's as simple as it is, but it makes a huge difference. As you can see, now, next thing you do is you go out and you hang that on your front door or you put it on the wall uh, during your Halloween party or, or something, along with all the rest of them that you're gonna make. And uh, you've, got, uh, you've got instant decorations, very cheap. It's a craft project the whole family will enjoy. And I think that it's, uh, it's something you'll enjoy doing too. So here it is. What do you think? Pretty good, huh? Okay, we'll be back uh, pretty soon with another project, and I'll see you then.